Hello and welcome to episode 45 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. We're against the Norwegian Lonely Down in the French defense. We're going to play B3. We're going to play our gambit line if possible. And this game will be added to a playlist of, well, not only the rating climb series. So obviously you can check out the previous episodes if you are new to the channel or you just want to catch up. But um, also it will be added to a playlist with all my other videos in this opening in the French defense. It's an opening that I'd really recommend. And we're essentially just going to gambit this pawn. It looks a bit dubious, but it's very good. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I play it over the board as well, like in classical chess with great success. Our opponent takes. We are... Ooh. Come on, don't freeze on me now. Don't freeze on me. Okay, I'm going to have to refresh the page. That's annoying. Um, well, this gives me an opportunity just to say... Um, if you're new to the channel, then the idea of the rating climb, like the point of the series, will be in the description. And if you're a returning viewer, then it's great to have you back. And you know the drill at this point. Let's develop with knight c3. And it's difficult for black to defend this pawn. Yes, he can defend it once, but after we go queen to e2 and add a second attacker, there is only one way to defend this pawn. And that is queen d4. And the problem with queen d4 is that we can play f3, gambit the pawn entirely, develop the knight with a tempo, castle queen side. The game becomes very, very nice for white to play. It's trying to advance the g-pawn, the bishop's amazing, etc, etc. In this position, white can just take, which is completely valid. I'm not a massive fan, though. Because if I take this pawn, then knight takes, queen takes, and bishop to f6. And then I have a big challenge on this file, and I don't really want to trade my bishop off, right? Because I want to castle queenside. So then I have to play d4, which is fine, but I do block my bishop off. So, my thought process is, okay, uh, there's no reason that this pawn is, well... No reason. This pawn isn't going anywhere, basically. So we're just going to castle. Uh, he, he can't defend this pawn in a valid way. Again, queen d4. We could go f3. We could also try and set up some like discoveries on the queen with the knight. But there's nowhere that good to go. Um, if queen d4, we could also play d3. Trying to open up the d file. But okay. He goes knight b d7. I think knight c6 is a little bit better, looking at d4 to attack our queen. But the knight does to support the knight on f6 from the d7 square. Now, again I can take, but again, bishop f6, knight f6, I don't really like that. So I'm tempted to go g4, g5 to try and kick this knight away. We're also, after going g4, preparing to play bishop g2 to add further pressure to the pawn. Because like I said, there isn't really a rush to take it. I think the computer prefers if you do take it earlier on. But it basically gives the position zeros. And it's still in this position. Maybe white has a minor advantage because I think the knight is supposed to come to c6. But I love these positions. And <clears throat> castles, I'm tempted to go h4. So that after I play g5, this pawn is supported. Bishop g2 is perfectly valid. g5 immediately is valid. But if I go g5, I don't really like knight d5. Because after takes, he could try and gobble this pawn. Maybe that's too dangerous for him. But I think h4 is fine. And then we're preparing g5, and when the knight moves, the pawn will be supported, so we can take this no problem. And if I can get a pawn to g5 to control the f6 square, then our bishop will remain nice and open. Okay, so a5, we don't really want to allow a4 from him, so a4 from us seems very nice. b5 is difficult to make happen, because we have four pieces controlling that square. 
You could try c6 and um, b5, but I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of it for him. We could put the bishop on this diagonal as well to try and exploit that. Okay, here we don't want to take because then his position is fixed. So I want to take on e4. Is this a problem? No, we just go queen f3. I'm of course not concerned if he takes f, sorry, h4, because this is going to be way too dangerous. I could take with the queen here, but then he can play a move like bishop f6 or knight f6. So I want to take with the knight. So if he goes knight f6, I can push again, maintaining control of f6 so the bishop can't go there. And if we take with the knight and then bishop f6, then we'll snap it off and our bishop will be incredible. So that's the plan. That is the plan. And you may think, like, this is kind of an unorthodox looking position. And yeah, it is kind of weird. But I love these positions personally. Wow, b5. What if I take? Okay, well, if I take uh, rook b8, it's fine. We just retreat. But if I take in bishop a6... Then the queen only has c6. Knight b4. Queen c3. Mm, it looks very dangerous. We could take with the pawn. Then a4. It's a very interesting move. I want to make queen takes work, right? So we'll calculate this line, queen b5, bishop a6. I think this is going to be a very um, important line. He can't take on a5 because he takes our bishop with a discovery. So queen b5, bishop a6. We have to go to c6. How can he attack our queen again? Our queen again has no moves from c6 though. Knight b8 doesn't work because the rook hangs. Knight e5 doesn't work because we control that square. Okay, so this knight can't attack the queen. Can this knight attack the queen? Well, it can't go to e7, but it can go to b4. So this is the only line to maintain attacking our queen. But then we go back to c3. Then we go back to c3. We threaten mate. And I think black's got some problems. Oh, wait, no, because um, knight a2 wins our queen. Ah. Queen b5, bishop a6, queen c6, knight b4. If we go back to c3, then he forks and wins our queen. So can we go anywhere else? I don't think so. All right, so we can't take. We can't take. So, what is the plan then? Very interesting move. Um, I'm considering c4? No, that, that doesn't look right. Maybe we have to take. We could consider knight c3. Because if takes, then takes. But if knight c3 and he trades, then he can take on a4. And we have some problems. So I don't see a better move than taking like this. And a4 is coming, but... I guess we deal with it. I guess we just deal with it. A4, alright. This, I think, is the only line we can logically go down. So, we're not going to think too hard about it. It's very nice from our opponent. I will demonstrate why I thought I couldn't take with the Queen. I think I'm right in saying I can't take that. So, fair play to him. That's a really interesting line. Because... I just thought b5 was uh, impossible. But okay, this might not even be that good for him. This is a move. 
you can start with this. Um, what if we take? Okay, then rook takes. He's kind of threatening bishop a3. So take there, king b1, bishop a3, bishop a1. Mm, this pawn looks very, very fragile though. C4, uh, for some reason that just looks like a move I want to play, but I'm not sure. Knight B4, oh, well if I go C4 he can also go here. He can also just push A3, and if we take then he takes and we're losing, so C4 isn't valid. I don't really want him to take us. I think we have to take him. Oof. Well, he is playing a very nice game right now. Bishop b7. Okay. Um, certainly a move. Mm. No, I don't want to play c4. You know what move I want to play is actually rook h3. Ah, but then knight f4. Damn. That's a move I wanted to play. Just to help in the defense of a3. Ah, okay, 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 okay. What have we got? Mm. Bishop g2. Hmm. Take. Bishop e7 is a good move. This guy's playing well. Maybe we sack the exchange. Like this. And then get our bishop involved. Honestly, I think that might be the best way to go. To sack the exchange. Because we are lacking in development. And if he doesn't if he doesn't grab the exchange, then let's say he plays rook a4. Mm. What do we do there? I wanted to play rook b3, but then knight c5. Rook h3, rook a4. Where are we going? Bishop g2, but then this comes with uh, far more danger. If we go bishop g2, he has knight f4 anyway, though. Maybe knight h3 to control the f4 square? Rook here. This is not easy. See, if he goes like this, then I'm happy. I think I'm happy with that position. Mm, am I though? Because then he can take on h4. Maybe knight f3? Knight f3, rook a4. Mm. These moves don't work because the knight b6. f3 is a move, but I don't want to play it. Because then it stunts our development massively. We might have to though. Uh, I'd rather develop. Let's develop. <sighs> this is um very difficult. Very difficult position. He's 
he's just outplaying me, in fairness. I'd be very curious to see where we went wrong. I guess just allowing b5 through that very complicated line uh, just wasn't good. But yeah, it was very difficult to see. Um, okay, what can we do? What can we do? I don't want bishop a3. Like, that looks like a problem. So, we could go queen d3 to defend that square. Mm. Then we have a lot of problems on our hands. What if we go bishop g2? Bishop g2, bishop a3. That looks like a problem. We could play a move like d3, giving our king an escape. But then knight... Uh, it also does defend our knight. d3, bishop a3, takes, takes. Bishop g2, and then knight f4. Knight f4 is a problem. What about if we go here? Knight c3 takes... takes... His bishop opens up on our knight though. Maybe f3 was the way to go, but... It'd still be very difficult to develop. Mm. Is this a move? There, there, there. Just rotate the knight over. Doesn't look awful. We are also preparing rook h3 in some cases, but again, this is such a big issue. King b1, bishop a3, bishop a1. Rook b4. That's a problem. Oh, this is so difficult. So difficult. And I've got no time. We're going to play this and hope I don't blunder. So tough. I really would like to know where I went wrong. Um, maybe pushing on the king side. I did it an incorrect moment. Um, I think I dealt with the queenside attack as best as I could. I feel like, but it's very difficult to try and defend this position. Obviously, we're going to try our best. Uh, it's not over. But we are very low on time as well, which does not help whatsoever. <laughs> But miracles can happen, for sure, for sure. If we can get f3 in, that would be a godsend. To defend this knight, block this diagonal off. Do we go f3 here? Take, take, check, might be free. F3, take, take, queen a8. Rook b1. Rook a2, king c1. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to hope I'm not blundering anything. Queen A8 here could be played. Um, 
That's also a move. That. Oh, that's really scary. That's very scary. C3. Take, take, here, here. If here we can escape. I don't see anything better. Oh. Wait. There, there, there. There, there. Here. If we go here. And then there. And then there he has knight f4 check. So maybe we have to go to b1. And if queen a1, king c2, go like this. And if king b1, queen a2, king c1. Here, here. 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 We can't go. Does that survive? I don't know. I'm going to go here to try and get rook b1 in, but... It's important we control this square. Okay, well we can't go up here, so... He's got to figure out a way to mate me. Here again. But then if we step there... Check... Here... If he takes, we take, and then take. No, that's no good. I think we need to go king b3. King b3, queen b2. King c4. Knight b6. Then we have to go this way. So if we go here immediately, check here, takes, take. Ah, there is also this. I missed that. I only looked at knight c5. If knight e5, king c4. Oh, wait, no, that's just mate. This is just mate. What am I on about? Wow. That is so frustrating. I have no idea where I went wrong, to be honest. Um. Huh. It's going to be an interesting analysis, but man, I actually don't know what I did. I don't know what I did incorrectly. Let's find out. Um, So I don't want to be that guy. But so in the game review, um, you can't see this, but he had 94.6% accuracy with only two inaccuracies all game. So he basically played perfectly. Now, I never accuse people of cheating, right? Um, but he was playing his moves so quickly as well, and I felt like I literally didn't have a chance. Like, sometimes you lose to people, and it's like, oh, I did have that counterplay, it just wasn't enough. But I felt like I didn't have a chance. And that doesn't happen very often, right? I normally at least generate some counterplay, especially with that type of uh, position. And the B5 move, I mean, B5 was insane. So, I decided to check his account. Again, I hate accusing people of cheating or whatever. Like, I really don't do it. Oh, let me just fix that real quick. Yeah, I really don't like to do it. But, um, I had a quick look through his profile. He created his account, um, less than a month ago. And, as you can see, he's won every single game. Um, look, 93% accuracy, 88, 82, 94.6. I mean, 94.6 is insane. Don't get me wrong, I've got accuracies like that before, and I obviously don't cheat, right? 
because you guys have seen me do it on video. But he's never lost a game. Um... I'd like to get your guys' take on this, like whether you think that he's legit or not. But the amount of time he was spending on his moves, uh, it's hard to believe. It's it's really difficult to believe. Like if we ever look through one of his other games, again, I'm if 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 this guy is legit, then I apologize. Uh, I really do because I'm not trying to like just accuse people of cheating without any basis or not enough basis but it is definitely a problem in chess i mean if we have a look at this game of his about a month ago which is when he created his account i wonder if he actually makes any mistakes really knight a6 what? What on earth is knight a6? Now the reason I'm getting my hair off with this move is because no- who- who plays knight a6? Like, is that the best move? Knight a6 is the third best move. What? Okay, I mean I understand the point, but it just looks stupid. C5, best move. Um, only move to get the advantage. Okay, that it's fairly natural though. It's fairly natural. It should be free. Okay, rookie 8 isn't perfect. Or is it? Okay, it's one of the best moves. C takes D4 is the best. Like this, which looks more natural to me. Now, obviously, I'm using a low-depth computer, so it's not going to be perfect. But rookie 8 is a perfectly good move. F4 takes takes 96. These are all very natural. P7. We do 2. Okay, what? Okay, so bishop c7 is the best move. And he finds it. That looks so weird to me. This could just be me being bad at chess, but this looks very strange. Okay. Wait, why wouldn't you just take? Because if queen takes bishop b6, isn't that the whole point of putting the bishop on c7? See, the computer actually thinks that a6 is slightly better. Because if you take here, white doesn't have to take, and he can go king h2. Well, this guy, we've clearly just established, if this guy is legit, then he is incredibly good. Like, he's very, very good at the game. Because, not to be big-headed, but I'm good at chess, and I got completely demolished. Like outplayed me by spending like 10 seconds on a move every move right and he and then he misses what this incredibly simple and he goes a6 instead okay now he does it but like why wouldn't you do it on the previous move there was no need to play a6 okay we'll have a look at another game um We'll have a look at another one of his games. Again, I'm trying to be really thorough with this because I don't want to say he's cheating without basis. We'll have a look at the game that he played here, maybe. Uh, so he's got the black pieces. Let's switch to black. E3, E6, E4, Knight, C6. I'm not going to think about the opening too much because... Like, he played the French. Like, obviously, that's not the best opening ever. Knight f3, d5, b4. Okay, well, this is just very obvious, though. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, the top computer move in this position is E3. And if you take like this, Queen F6. Because D4 isn't playable? Or Knight C3 isn't playable? Okay, but you would just take on B4. Like, everyone would take on B4. No, this guy's cheating. This guy, 100% cheating. Nobody plays E3. Um, oh, this is the way the game went. Oh, he found... Okay, come on. How long did he spend on that plan? Like, zero seconds. F3. And he didn't take the rook? Bishop E4 check is slightly better. Oh, come on now. King F2, Queen A1, Bishop D3. Okay, this is easy enough to see. Knight F6, okay. Oh, he just starts sacking his pieces. I'm I'm not going to read into anything here. Yeah, this is... What? So, Rook H2 is the best move. God knows why. Because you deflect the rook off of defending e1? What? I'm sorry, but in this position, everybody takes the bishop. You don't think twice about it. He played rook h2? Man, come on. If, it's just not even subtle. He's won every single game. He's playing moves like Rook H2, moves like E3. Yeah, I'm convinced he's he he cheated, hundred <laughs> percent. And I'm gonna report him. Um, I tried to be fair. I tried to be absolutely sure, not just take it off of my game. But his account was created about a month ago. He's won every single game he's played. He's finding moves like E3 and Rook H2. Come on. And he's playing them all instantly. Like, he's spending zero time. And he spent zero time with me. Let's go over my game anyway. Uh, because <laughs> some of those moves... B5. And Bishop B7. <sighs> Let's have a look. Alright. I have just reported him because I'm absolutely convinced. Please let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong in this accusation. Because, you know, I know... People go around accusing people of, people of cheating all the time. And I think it's terrible. Like, it really is. Because people's reputations get completely destroyed. And it can be with, like, little basis a lot of the time. I won't go deep into it. But, you know, you, you should give people the benefit of the doubt when possible. And I really tried to. But this guy is obviously cheating. Let's go over the game. So, e4, e6, d5 b3, bishop b2, and he takes, which by the way, by the way, not many people actually take, like a lot of people will play moves like knight 2 f6 here, and you go into these kinds of lines, because they're scared to take, um, taking is the best move, but a lot of people are scared to, because they're like, what on earth is this gambit, like, what's going on, am I about to lose a rook somehow, <laughs> you know? Uh, so if you check the playlist, like, in this opening on my channel, most people do decline the gambit. And you get some very interesting positions from that. But it's just worth noting, like, it is rare that people actually accept it. Knight c3, knight f6, queen e2. Bishop e7, I think is the best move, by the way. So, yeah, castle. Like I said, taking on e4 first is better but i kind of don't like these no not that these sorts of positions apparently i can just castle and if we trade queen f6 king b1 oh no d4 is better i mean taking on f2 would be very very suicidal uh you just can't develop and your queen's trapped 
uh, I guess rook d2 is coming in to trap the queen. But I don't really like these lines personally where the dark squared bishops get traded. Although maybe I should be more pragmatic with that. We have knight bd7. I go g4, which is one of the best moves because, like I said, you want to try and dislodge the knight. And then we go h4. This is all good. a5 is a little bit inaccurate. We go a4, knight d5, which, by the way, going knight d5 unprompted is also a bit weird. Like, okay, I've seen ideas like b6, bishop b7 a lot in the past. Um, c6 is also a common move to try and reinforce b5 in the future and maybe get the queen out on um, this diagonal at some point as well. Knight d5 is just a bit odd because, like, I'm, I haven't forced you to move yet. Surely you wait until I play g5 before you move. But okay. We take on e4, which... So that's a mistake. It's better to take with the queen. Really? And if black takes here, b takes... And then you want to play c4 because now your rook's open. And then you clamp down on b5. I understand that. And if he plays a move like bishop f6. Okay, then we have g5. And if you take... D takes, bishop back, oh, bishop d3, g6, and h4. That's completely winning. So this is a mistake. And, yeah, see, this is only a mistake because of the move b5. And it was this line that I was talking about, where if we take with the queen, bishop a6, queen c6, knight b4. And our queen only, well, either we play knight f6 check to give our queen an escape like this... Or, the only other safe square is c3, and then knight a2 check. That's kind of an impossible line. Not impossible line, because I did see it. But b5 is like a move that you don't play, because it's controlled three times. The queen, the pawn, and the bishop. And you can't even go rook b8, which is natural. <sighs> really? Come on, bro. Come on, be, be a bit less obvious, man. <laughs> So, yeah, and if b5 isn't played, my position's good. If black continues with, like, c6, which is one of the other best moves, I have a better position. And this is what I was anticipating. And, okay, the computer's kind of, like, flip-flopping because b5 is an idea with these things in mind. Okay, it's really changing its mind. But you understand what I mean. Like, from a visual standpoint, this looks pretty good for white, right? And I, I have success in these positions very often. But yeah, b5. Wow, okay. Um, I take, because I don't see anything better. a4. Obviously, that's a normal-looking move. Again, I take, because... c4 is a move I considered, which is apparently the best move. But after knight b4, I was like... I've just weakened my queen side even more. Rook eight. Oh, so the point is to force the knight away from f4 so you can go rook h3. That's interesting. But even then, I was worried about ideas like a3. And, I mean, just look at my king. Like, this is abysmal. Anyway, a4, we take. And yeah, bishop b7. Like, come on. Everybody just takes. Everybody takes that. And the computer gives it a miss. But, like, you you just take that. No, he instead, with... By spending basically zero time, decides on bishop b7. <laughs> like, what? By the way, f3 and rook h3 are good moves here. c4 is also a good move. I considered all of these. But, yeah, I decided that... Rook h3 was good if he goes knight f4. Not good, but it gave me some chances if we got into this kind of position. But I rejected this because I didn't know what I was going to do if he took on a4, which I think is hmm, basically the same evaluation as knight f4. But then I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Something like knight c3, knight f4. I lose the a4 pawn anyway. 
Better to give the queen up here, which is like, you know, difficult to do. So I chose knight f3, or k4, that's natural. Uh, knight d4, bishop a3, again, normal move. You go f3, queen e7. Mm, I'm not, that's not really, it's not really a suspicious move. Um, if you're like 2000 odd rated, I would expect you to find queen e7 to be fair. But, but, finding queen e7 in four seconds, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, c3, which I'm actually quite happy I found because it is kind of the best move in the position. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're still completely losing, but okay, takes, takes, queen a3, king c2, queen a2, check, 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 check. King d3, and then it's mating 1. I didn't go this way, because of queen b2, it's no longer under attack, which was my whole idea to get out of this. And then, I guess I'm just getting mated anyway. I saw this. Um, what was my idea? My idea was, if here and here, again, I missed, I missed knight e5 somehow, because I only saw knight c5, but we control that square. And my idea was king e3, knight e2, rook a1, rook a1, and king e2. And I'm down the exchange for a pawn. It's definitely a bad position, but I can try and fight here. So this was my idea. Um, but yeah, obviously, because he was cheating, he found the correct way. And by the way, he spent like 15 seconds on this move. A mate in one and I'm sorry I've I've missed mate in ones in the past sure but why did it take him that long to find it if he found all the other moves in the game so quickly obviously a cheater this is a big problem in chess it really is because I mean because I know he's a cheater it doesn't bother me as much right but if I didn't realize he was a cheater, then I'd be like, what on earth am I doing? I just got completely crushed. I had absolutely zero chance. I don't even know where I went wrong. Moves like b5, moves like bishop b7. Like what? b5 is a move that takes like several minutes of calculation. And that's if you even consider it. b5 is a move that's off limits. Except for this one variation where my queen gets trapped. And yeah, people can find that, don't get me wrong. But not in like 10 seconds. This is also not like an opening trap where you just memorize the line and you're like, oh, yeah, if we get this sort of setup, then b5 is a move. No. No, because this isn't a normal opening. You can't blame this on prep. It's just straight up cheating. It's really sad because I don't understand the point. Like, what are you gaining? I guess we gain a bit of education from it. One, in how to spot cheaters, because I think, like, after the game, I was a little bit suspicious, uh, just because of how perfectly and how quickly he played. And then I check his profile, check some of his other games, and he's also finding those B5, Bishop B7 moves, where it's like, come on. How are you finding those with zero time? Uh, and then it's obvious they're cheating. But it does also raise some interesting points about the position. Like this whole um, b5 and queen getting trapped line is very interesting. It'd be far more impressive if he actually found it instead of cheating, obviously. But you can still learn from it. It's the same as like just losing a chess game in general. Um, you can still learn. Even if it's frustrating. And I guess it's the same with playing a cheater. Except we need to get them off the site, obviously. So if you do think you're playing a cheater. And they meet a lot of these criteria that I've just displayed and shown you. Just report them. Block them. Get them off the website. Chess.com I know are putting a lot of effort into doing this. And they're closing so many accounts. Sometimes, sometimes wrongly. But the majority of the time correctly. So... Yeah, I'm sure they will remove him very quickly. Uh, I have full faith in them. 
I know they're a very good company and they really do want to try and try and improve this problem. But it's an issue nonetheless. And yeah, maybe we get refunded the rating points and maybe we don't. This could have been the last episode of the rating climb because 2000 ELO is the goal. But hey, not anymore. I guess you guys will know from like the thumbnail and the title anyway that I was playing a cheater all along. Um, but I certainly didn't. And those were just my brutally honest thoughts during the game when I was just frustrated. Like, how on earth is he doing this to me? He's tearing me apart with no effort. <laughs> like, this doesn't happen. This does not happen. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, I hope it wasn't frustrating for you to watch because you knew he was cheating. Let's get him off the site.